I feel like Royal Rumble 2024 wasn't necessarily bad, but I can't help but feel a little disappointed. Don't get me wrong, Bailey winning was a great moment, Cody vs Punk in the final two was unpredictable, and Cody winning and already choosing Roman Reigns was definitely a strong moment. It also answered the biggest question. Who is facing Roman at WrestleMania? Well, it's Cody. But I'll see you at Thanksgiving, Rocky. Still, can't help but feel like it all just kinda of felt too safe and sometimes flat. I guess it's partly the crowd's fault. Now, I'm not sure if we can blame the crowd but it really felt like anything that was supposed to feel like a big moment just felt kind of underwhelming because we didn't get the proper reaction. I mean, I'm watching Cody vs. Punk and it's just there. It should feel bigger. That's what she said. And you know, even though I was disappointed Punk didn't win, after watching this moment of Cody winning for the second time, I've realized something. I'm kinda sold on the fact that Cody won and I'll explain at the end of this video. So I'll talk about my feelings on every match, but I just wanna get this out of the way. This was the most pointless thing I've ever seen. I know why it happened. I think Brock Lesnar was supposed to be in that spot. So Pat was the replacement and he just eliminated himself. I feel like they were going for a little gag, but it just didn't translate and people booed. The crowd felt disappointed that a Royal Rumble entry got wasted. So let's talk about Royal Rumble 2024 starting with the women's match. I can say this about both Royal Rumble matches, something was missing and I'm not sure what it is, I just didn't get that feeling. First of all, Naomi returning is great, I believe she's going to be a regular in the WWE right now, which is awesome and still didn't really get get that big of a crowd reaction. But that was one of the biggest returns that happened during the show and I'm really happy she's back. We also got a TNA Women's Champion with the Championship coming out and uh, I don't think she's gonna be in the WWE but she had a pretty decent performance. They were trying some comedy with uh, R-Truth and I gotta be honest, uh, this moment just felt kinda lazy. R-Truth is a guy and he's entering a Women's Royal Rumble match. This, this seemed predictable and uh, you know, WWE could definitely do something better. We got the debut of Jade Cargill and that was a great moment. What a presentation, man. Like, I believe that there's a chance she might just win this match. She also lifted Nia Jax and eliminated her, so, you know, I'm already the biggest Jade Cargill fan. Oh, and I wish Randy entered the Women's Royal Rumble match and recreated this beautiful moment. Number 30 was the returning Liv Morgan and uh, she was in a pretty uncomfortable situation because it's number 30, we didn't get that many returns, people are expecting AJ Lee or Sasha Banks. You get Liv Morgan, it's great, but it's kinda expected, she's still under WWE's contract, so, you know, it's not really WWE's fault, it's not Liv's fault, but it was one of these moments where you're like, okay, I, I guess I should be happy with this. Also, damage control story progressed, so basically, the agreement was, Bayley's winning the Royal Rumble match, but damage control members enter the rumble which made Bailey feel like she's being betrayed. Lucky for her, Bailey won the match and I think that was the right call. She lost, like I've said, the most matches in 2023, I believe so. She did a lot for the women's division so it's finally time to give something to Bailey and uh, that was a great moment. The crowd kind of popped and we pretty much know the story. She's going to defeat Io Sky at WrestleMania, I believe so. WWE Championship Fatal 4-Way match. Honestly, I had higher expectations expectations on this one because yes the match was fun the moves were great the crowd actually popped we got this is awesome chance which is you know really unexpected since the crowd sucked ass so everything was going fine with the match i was like this is different finally not the same roman reigns title defense We'll get to that. Okay, I wanna talk about LA Knight. Didn't stand out, looked like he belongs in this match, which was, you know, a lot of people's concern. But LA Knight's presentation was really good in this match, in my opinion. He looked really, really strong, and at points it looked like he's about to win the match. Of course, you thought that if you're not watching the WWE, and you don't know about Roman Reigns' uh, title reign. So it was all going fine, and WWE still with the goddamn bloodline interferences. I wanted this to be a a little bit different, you know? Also, it was Nelly Knight. AJ was the one who ate the pin, which was also unexpected and goes to show you that AJ doesn't have that much to lose. LA Knight does, so WWE protected LA Knight, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. So, you know, Roman Reigns retains the championship, it was expected, but I just felt like a fatal four-way would mix things up in this Roman Reigns 
tile reign. And it didn't. It's Roman Reigns. He doesn't need protection in every match. He's holding the championship for over three years now. So I guess I want to believe he can beat these guys, right? Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens was a little bit different when it comes to Logan's matches. I like this match because this one felt more of a regular match for Logan. It was kind of a test. And what I mean by that is that it showed that Logan can wrestle a match that felt more of a, I guess, classic wrestling match with uh, less acrobatics. Don't get me wrong, I love when Logan Paul is jumping and doing this crazy shit, but this showed us a little bit of a different side of uh, Logan Paul in the WWE. You know, the little things, for example, he absolutely nailed the facial expressions. You can tell all the conversations with wrestlers during his podcast are paying off. Also, we got a very interesting finish, so you get the idea. Brass knuckles, it happens in every Logan Paul match. Well, this one was a little bit different. Owens got a hold of him. He was about to win the United States Championship, but the referee saw Kevin's hand. So Kevin Owens got disqualified. Logan Paul retained the championship, but Kevin Owens still beats the crap out of Logan Paul after the match. So I kind of like this finish. I feel like it was creative and it fits Logan's character. I know not a lot of you are going to agree, but I believe in this case, Kevin Owens also kind of needs some protection protection, you know. So I enjoyed this, but it's not one of these Logan Paul matches you're going to remember. And finally, let's talk about the Men's Royal Rumble match. So the Usos kicking off the match was great, but the crowd didn't really sell it in my opinion. At least not enough, because this was supposed to look a little bit more important. Well, anyway, we still got the moment. Andrade came back to the WWE, which is someone I forgot to mention in my predictions video or my WWE Royal Rumble Returns video, but yes, Andrade is back. Uh, he's a Triple H guy, by the way, you know, worked with Triple H in NXT, so I believe the future is bright, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be involved with the Santos Escobar, a Mysterio storyline. Not sure whether he's a face or heel, though. We didn't really need the returns during this match, like I've said, but one guy for nostalgia pop would have been great. And I'm not talking about Andrade, he's a pretty recent WWE superstar. I really thought guys like Mr. Kennedy or Chris Masters are going to show up. We needed that one nostalgia pop. You know, Omas isn't really doing it for me. That was a given surprise, but is it really a surprise at this point? Yes, he's going to show up in every Royal Rumble from now on. No storylines, nothing. Didn't really get this one. Yeah, that Pat McAfee entry was a complete waste, man. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It was a last minute change, so I guess I can excuse that. But the roster is so huge and you decided to waste it on Pat McAfee who didn't even wrestle and eliminated himself. Uh, that that was a complete waste. Punk had a great performance in this match. That was the highlight for me, just watching CM Punk back in the WWE. Absolutely loved it. Also, number 30 was Sammy Zayn, which is pretty good. At first, I was a little disappointed, but, you know, I remembered how big Sammy Zayn was like a year ago. So, you know, it is nice to see him back and more importantly, probably watching him on Raw again. We got the perfect final six in this match. Punk, Cody, Sammy, Damien, Drew, and Gunter. People who could legit win this match, at least in kayfabe, right? The final three were Gunter, Punk, and Cody, which is absolutely perfect in my opinion. Gunter got eliminated and it was down to Cody versus C. M. Punk, which again, I was like, why am I not feeling it? And I feel like it was the crowd. It just didn't translate, I guess. It's crazy how looking at screenshots of this match made me feel more than watching the actual match. I'm talking about Cody versus Punk. So I guess it was the atmosphere, it just wasn't there. Also, Punk saying, I didn't wait 10 years to lose to Dusty's kid. That was great. That was a great line by Punk. Kind of a heelish line in my opinion. And I kind of realized Cody is going to win. Once I've realized Punk is beating the crap out of Cody for like 2 minutes now. Then it was pretty obvious. And you know, Cody won the match, and I hated it at first, but we got Cody picking Roman Reigns already, which is great. Now we know Cody is going to try to finish the story again. And you know, it kinda makes sense. Roman cannot refuse. He can't do any politics. He has to face Cody Rhodes. That's why I kinda like it now. We don't need to overthink this entire storyline. Yes, Cody is on Raw, but he won the Royal Rumble. He can pick Roman, and Roman can't say no. And you know, Cody winning the Royal Rumble, 
makes it look like he actually deserves another shot and it's not just for the sake of finishing the story because it's a big pay-per-view match so i appreciate that and you know cm punk is announced for elimination chamber so i believe we're going to get a number one contenders match for the world heavyweight championship this way cm punk earns his opportunity too so you know i've kind of changed my mind on this a little bit i guess still it would have been nice to see cm punk win this match but roman versus cody well now it's a simple story where cody actually deserves the match and we don't need to overthink it so these are my thoughts on wwe royal rumble 2024 i think it was kind of a mixed bag especially since triple h gave us so many stellar pay-per-views outside of the finishes it just kind of felt a little underwhelming at times so thank you for watching this video like subscribe if you already did and the great one peace love and hugs it's been a pleasure